Hi friends, I'm Lorna with Cottage Necessities. It's a blustery day outside, so it's a good time to be in doing crafts and crafty things inside. But uh, today we're going to do a little bit of baking, a little bit of upcycling, a little bit of painting and decoupage. So the first thing you'll see is me upcycle. I'm going to show you how I upcycle my house dresses. And then I'm going to show you how to make the best blueberry muffins ever. And then I'm going to show you how to upcycle a little sewing notions chest, or you can use it for jewelry or anything you want, but it's just absolutely adorable. And I hope you'll stay till the end. So welcome and let's get started. Do you ever buy something just because you fell in love with the fabric? Well, that's kind of the problem I have. <laughs> um, I just want to show you a couple of projects that will be in the works as soon as I find the right t-shirt to go with them and give you a little bit of an idea of how I do it. Both of the, let's see, both of these are wraparound dresses. Well, all three of them are actually, but these two are from The Gap, and I just love these fabrics. So, normally, this has a seam in the back. If it didn't have a seam in the back, I'd put the back side on the front of the skirt. I'd actually turn it around backwards and sew it up the back. So this one also has little cap sleeves that can be added to the bottom if there's enough there, or you can just add your t-shirt piece to the bottom like I did on this one. So this one still has the tags on it. I haven't worn it in all these years that I've had it. Then there's this one also. Let's see if it has a, this also has, I just love this fabric. I'll be doing more projects with these dresses where I add the t-shirt to the top so that I wear them. I've never worn these because they're just not that comfortable. Maybe they're too low cut or my arms aren't, the arm sleeves aren't long enough. So I just avoid wearing them. Sometimes you can go find a bargain somewhere. This one, this is also a wraparound dress and it's got pockets. And it's a knit, like a t-shirt material. I got this at TJ Maxx on clearance for $4. So I thought, well, what the heck? This It's a size small, but there's no seam in the back. So I can actually, and since it's a wrap around, it's gonna be a little bit bigger around. And I did check it, so. It will go something like this. It'll get sewn up in the back and I'll put a t-shirt on the top. I probably won't. Well, these sleeves, it's all like a dolman sleeve, so I, I won't be using that, but I can use this in another project, the top part of it. So keep your eyes peeled for those bargains. Or if you have an old dress that you just love the fabric and you haven't worn it for whatever reason, maybe the sleeves are too short or it's too low cut or doesn't fit right, make yourself one of these and you can wear it around the house and just um, feel like a lady. <laughs> I've had this idea for quite a while now. Um, I bought this out of a catalog and it has a t-shirt, has a knit top with a cotton bottom skirt. And these are just really comfy house dresses. And I thought I can make these and I can make it the way I like because I prefer, well, if this has a V-neck, but I prefer a longer sleeve. So that's what I did here. I added my own t-shirt. I put the bottom of the shirt around the arms, front and back. So that's why sometimes you'll see a little curves, but you'll also, I'll show you some other ones that I've done that where I've innovated, lengthened the sleeved sleeves and made dresses into house dresses that I can wear every day, 
versus something that was hanging in the closet that I never wore. This was a wraparound dress that hung in my closet for at least two or three years with the tags on it. I just never wore it because I didn't like the way the bodice looked on me. So I took the skirt, I saved the bodice for another project like my crazy quilt, and I put the ties on so that it ties in the back. And I also did a little stenciling with some fabric paint and made a stencil. And as the, I did with the other ones, I cut my t-shirt here below the bodice, below the bust line, and I added the t-shirt bottom to my sleeves, front and back. And that's how I got, this is very comfortable. And this dress is lined. I did have to iron this on the bottom, but I'm sure if I just pulled it out of the dryer, it could probably just be hung up and save that way. Let me know if you like it. You know, I like to wear my leggings and my boots with these. This one has a higher waistline. It's like an empire waist. So in, as a result, I got longer sleeves. And this one is also, this has a knit fabric. This was a gathered skirt that I put on the bottom of one of my t-shirts. I like the way this one turned out too. It's very interesting. Typically, I don't like to go with stripes this way, but in this case, it's a house dress. This is so comfy. And a lot of times I'll wear leggings with my house dress because it's cold outside. <laughs> You may have seen me wearing this dress before when I've been painting because it's a house dress that I've made for myself, an upcycled house dress. I made it from a skirt that I thrifted and one of my regular t-shirts that I like, they have the v-neck. And the only thing I didn't like was that the sleeves were too short. So what I do is cut the bottom of the t-shirt off and add it to my sleeves to give them more length. So that's that. This t-shirt you may have seen in one of my other videos. This was an old dress that I thrifted. It was brand new, still had the tags on it, but somebody had used too hot of an iron and burnt a hole in the bodice. So I'm cutting that up, using it for crazy quilting. I added this little cap sleeves to the bottom of my t-shirt sleeve, and I added the ties that came on it so that I can tie it. For the most part, these are wash and dry, easy to wear, nice little comfy house dresses. You can design your own. I just like the, what this one says. Free your mind and design your own. Today I'm gonna to make the basic recipe for muffins from Joy of Cooking. It's one of my go-to recipe books. And when you're making muffins, um, just remember any muffin or, this is a basic muffin recipe that you can add. I'm going to add blueberries because they turn out wonderful. And you can, if you don't have blueberries, you can add any other uh, fruit or nuts that you have because it's basically like little mini coffee cakes. So think of it that way and you could serve it for tea, you can have it for breakfast, you can have it as dessert. So today I'm gonna to use these little muffin uh, paper liners. I'm gonna make 12 muffins and this is um, kind of Valentine's y so um, I like to give muffins to people that come and do work for me here. But if you have little ones in the house, you can also use these little tiny muffins. When my granddaughter comes, I like to use those. And then she has a muffin that's just her size. And she can play tea party, 
and have fun with that. So the other thing you can do with muffins is you can, once you fill your liners, and if you don't have the liners, you can grease the muffin tin. But once you um, fill this with the raw dough, you can put this in the freezer and freeze them. Once they're frozen, take them out and put them into a bag, like a, a freezer bag, and then pop them in the freezer. The only thing you have to remember is the temperature. I have my oven preheating at 400 degrees, and you'll just cook them an extra five minutes if they're frozen. So today we're just gonna make them fresh, and uh, let's get started. First, you'll want to mix your dry ingredients. So we've got two cups of all-purpose organic flour. I use three quarter cups of packed brown sugar. I think that gives it such a nice flavor. One tablespoon of baking powder. Half teaspoon of salt. And then I've got some whole nutmeg here. If you have ground nutmeg, you can use that. But what you wanna do is get about a quarter of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I think this is the, the secret to how good these turn out. But let me just show you how that looks. These nutmeg berries, you can buy those like that and it smells so good. It's like a perfume almost. And then you can just mix that up, mix it all together. Breaking up your uh, brown sugar if you packed it well. Now the secret to mixing muffins is you don't want to over mix them. And once you start to put your additives in, like your fresh blueberries, and I recommend organic, is you only fold them in so that you don't crush them or cause them to sort of smear throughout the muffin. I just love blueberry muffins. And if you have some that aren't breaking up, you can just do it by hand. Little pieces like that. In fact, you can do the whole thing by hand if you want. Once you get it to that point. And it's okay if it's a little bit lumpy. Now you can also just, once you've baked your muffins, you can also put them in a freezer bag and just freeze them. So just set this aside for a second while we get the wet ingredients. Now we mix our wet ingredients separately. So first we want to do two farm fresh eggs. Farm fresh feathers in there. I don't think so. I rinsed my eggs, so and just sort of whisk those up. And I have one cup of milk here. And you can whisk that together. And then I took one cube of butter and melted that in the microwave for 30 seconds. And it just soft, it made it soft and liquidy so we can pour that in. It's kind of cooled down so it's not going to cook our eggs. And then the last ingredient, if you've watched my Vanilla Bean King video, this is my master blend of my um, vanilla extract and I use a bottle of bourbon, put about 25 vanilla beans in there and this was made in September of 2023, so it's over a year old. It's aged well, and it's gotten nice and dark, you can see. And we'll just put about a teaspoon of that in. 
I like a lot of vanilla. <laughs> and get that all mixed. Okay, now on to the next step. And just a note, I keep my old vanilla bottles because they're amber color. This one is plastic, but if you can get a good amber bottle in glass, even better. And I just refill it from the master when it gets down to the bottom. So now we've got everything mixed here. We've got our liquid ingredients and we've got our flour. We're just going to make a little opening in the bottom there and pour that in. I'm just using a fork, big fork. Oh, it smells so good. That bourbon vanilla, the nutmeg. Okay, I've got all the ingredients nice and wet, but they're still a little bit lumpy. Get those in there. Some were frozen. I don't always eat them right away, so I like to put, I usually get them and put them in the freezer until I'm ready to use them. And then I just rinse them out in the colander and they thaw out pretty fast. So I'm just folding these in, just not really overly mixing. And now we're ready to put them in the, the liners. My mom used to put double paper liners in the muffin tin just for an extra strength in the muffin, but I'm, I just have one in these. Now I've got this little spatula. I, I like to use this when I make my waffles in my little mini waffle maker, and I think this is going to be a nice size for my muffins. And you can make your muffins as... You can fill your muffin cups as much or as little as you want. It's up to you. Some people like a big fluffy top on their muffin. For me, it's the one with the lots of berries. So I'll get those filled up and then we'll pop them in the oven. So that's nice and full for my baking needs. And next time I go to the store, I'll, go, I'll get another bottle of bourbon to fill this one up. Okay, I've cleaned off all the edges and I've filled these almost to the brim. I've cleaned off the edges around the sides so I don't get any burn parts. And then I have enough here to probably put some in the freezer. Got a little bit of batter extra. I'll put some in the freezer to freeze for another day. Just taking these out of the oven. There, I cooked them for an extra five minutes because I filled them to the brim. So I cooked, they were supposed to be 15, 12 to 15, but you wanna do it until your toothpick comes out clean and we're gonna check one of the tallest ones and it comes out clean. So we'll let those cool a little bit, then we'll have a taste test. Here's a couple of muffins that have cooled nicely. I'm just going to cut into one. Show you how it looks inside. It's jam packed full of beautiful purple blueberries. And there's already enough butter in this to just eat it just like it is. And if you want to freeze these, you can freeze these and then just heat them up in a, um, wrap them in a damp towel and heat them in the microwave for 30 seconds 
and you'll have a nice muffin for breakfast. As soon as I bit into one of these, I could taste those fresh blueberries. Look at all those blueberries in that. These are moist, flavorful, and delicious. Mmm. Just a hint of nutmeg. And I would even try, next time I might try doing a little bit of lemon zest in them. And I think that would be fabulous. I wanted to show you my frozen batter cupcakes. Blueberry muffins. I just made two because I thought that would be perfect. A nice little breakfast, two little muffins. Now when I take these out to cook them, all I have to do is put them in a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. They should just pop right out. Something for another day when I don't feel like cooking. I got this little chest for notions at Joann's and I thought it would be cute if I did some fancy decoupage work on this and showed you on a smaller scale how fun and easy it can be. And um, I think it's good to start with something smaller and then graduate to something bigger. And I printed out a couple of prints from the Graphics Fairy and I'm going to put this on the front of it. So, and then I have a second one that I'm going to probably take some of these flowers, maybe some of these birds, and put those around the sides. So if you want to hang in with me for a minute, I'll show you how I do that. So first I'm just going to lay it down. And I'm going to put decoupage over the entire front. And if you're worried that it's going to be gluing itself, we'll, we'll go back with a razor and open it up. So hopefully it won't glue it shut. So first we'll just get this all covered with the decoupage medium. And I like these knobs, so I'm going to keep them and I'll paint them gold. Now sometimes it does help if you, I'm just gonna cut this, trim this up. And we're gonna use some paint to blend it. This is almost the perfect size for this piece. So I want it to, I want it to, I want it to fit from the bottom going up. So I'm just centering it on here. And I'm going to make a couple of cuts where the knobs are. And we can always trim it later. I'm just going to push it down over the knobs like that. Make a little bit more of a cut right there. So it fits nicely. I want it to be nice and flat.
Okay, and then I'm going to lift it up. I've creased it there, and I'm going to lift it up and see if I can cut it. I'll just put my glasses on for this. Okay. So we're just going to get this on here. Get it centered on. Press it down real good and let that dry. And then also I'll come around the side and I'll glue that down with the Mod Podge. You wanna make sure you're doing, um, it's laying, the paper's laying down around the knobs. Press it down really firmly. And then we'll come back and we'll cut this, cut it open with a razor. So that's a start, and then we're also going to get this painted. So now I'm doing this side. I've got that side kind of done, and I've got three parts to it because part of the page was printed on a separate page. So I'm going to lay each one down. I've got this already covered with Mod Podge. I'm just going to lay each one down, line it up, and then I will come back over it and put Mod Podge on it again, and we'll come in with some paint and see what we can do there. But this is what that looks like so far. It's possible I probably should cut that part, that top part off, I think. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to go back and cut that branch off. Because it's kind of out of place, and I'll just leave the birds. you got to do it while it's still wet so you can lift it, but... I think that's going to do it. So we'll fill this in maybe with a little bit of that same color. We'll find that color and we'll fill that in and get our little box finished. Since this is a small project, I've got a baggie here and I like to put it over to smooth out some of the wrinkles. So I just lay it on top and then I can rub my fingers across. You can use clean cling wrap or a baggie. But being that this is a smaller project, the baggie is easy enough to use. And I think I've got most of those wrinkles out. Do the same over here. And then we'll cut it. And I've got this razor. I'm gonna give it, see if we can cut through. See if I can feel where the corners are. If you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm cutting. That's why you want this to be really nice and dry. Gotta figure out where your cuts will be. So I'll see if I can get this one drawer done and then I'll show you. I open it. And you can kind of feel where the drawer is. Just cut right between it. Between It's a very slight. Area. Just want to look for your indentation.
You want to make sure you have all the edges perfectly cut before you try to open it because it could ruin your design if you don't. This is probably the most meticulous part of this project. I'm just going to go around one more time, make sure I've got all my cuts through, are perfectly going through. And then we'll see, oh, look at that blade. Let's see if we can open it. So there we have our first drawer. Now what we can do is kind of clean up the edges with a file, with a, just a fingernail file, and we'll decoupage over the top of this again, of each one. Okay, this is where it gets a little tricky. I've got the buttermilk cream and this top notch color is bright pink. I put one drop in here so that I can mix it. This is just a little jar, a little dry, with dried out paint in it. I'm going to put one more little drop. One more tiny drop. because my colors on here have a little more pink in them. I started adding, could probably use a smaller brush, but just blending some color in, trying to fuse these colors together a little bit. And then what I can do is just take a little piece of this paper towel. And go over some of the places that I don't want it, like this bird's head. Got too much on there. Got a little too much on that blossom. And so what I've done is just kind of blended it together. Here's a little more. Like there's a little too much pink, I'll put a little more yellow in there. You can even use your finger to just get those smudges off if that's what you need to do. So it, it goes pretty smoothly. So I've got the pink and the yellow on this side. And then on this side, and I've also done this gold on the bottom and on the knobs. And then over here, I used the sage, which I could blend this a little bit more. I'm just going kind of up to the edges. It's my little pink mixture here. And put some of that pink on there. Get some pink in there like that. And then I think I'll just rub it off. And then I'll go over again with some decoupage medium. So I just kind of made that a little bit of the colors blended on that side. I've gone over all these pieces, made sure all these center pieces were laying down flat. And now we're just going to let this dry. And then we may do second coats, but I'll show you the final. Another tip, like if you have, I have a little bit of warping here where the bubble air got in. What you can do is take a, like a regular straight pin and make some little pin holes in your warps where it's raised up. And then just take your plastic wrap and push those down. And it should take some of that air out and help, help those to lay flat.
Okay, folks, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a post. We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend.